Well, hello there, my name is HW, and thank you so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. Today, I wanna talk about my very, 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 very favorite effect in the Kemper. That was a lot of varies, but that is how very strongly I feel about this thing. It's not delays and reverbs, although, I have always maintained that the, the, after the updates, the delays and reverbs in the Kemper are second to none. Second to none. Strymon, get out of the way. These things are more musical. There's a million options. They're super dialed in. In fact, what is probably generally very true of the Kemper is if you're looking to do something, there's parameters and tools built in here to do that. And the limit is really our understanding, our know-how, and uh, our ability to really know how to change something to get to what we're after. So uh, that's why I always hope these videos are helpful. That's why I, I want you to, uh, to dive in with me as we explore the Studio EQ. This thing is the cat's meow. It's the turtle's pajamas. Whatever the kids are saying these days, it's that. It's, 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 it's hotter than the newest TikTok dance. It is uh, crazier than the newest music video. It is uh, absolutely bigger than the Insta book face page that you just found. Okay, I'm joking. It is incredible though if you want to change the sound of your guitar. And I don't mean fundamentally strip away what makes an AC30 an AC30 or fundamentally change the magic of a 68 or 69 uh, uh, you know, Plexi uh, Marshall. I'm talking about how to use this graphic EQ to make your fabulous Plexi profile, your chimey AC30, your um, beautiful Dumble cleans or overdrive, how to make that John Mayer tone do exactly what you want, be so pleasing and soft and beautiful on the ears, you will just absolutely fall over. I'm talking women will throw their clothes at you, men will want to be you, children will, will wish you were their father. Wow, this is getting weird. But <laughs> the, the Studio EQ really, really is powerful, and I really think it's the key it's the, it's the sort of bridge from where you are to where you want to get and knowing how to change uh, a, a profile or guitar tone to be exactly what you want uh, in your head. So, I hope you find this helpful. That is a good profile. I know I say a lot of profiles are my favorite and people get on me about that. HW, everything's your favorite. Listen, this is my favorite Dumble-esque thing and I'm just gonna tell you, I've been a fan of the Ultraphonics mod and sound and this is, uh, well, it's this amp right here. Um, it's a, uh, it's by Sabago Sounds and it's a clone of a, a Basement Ultraphonics, an Ultraphonics Basement by Dumble. And to me, it's unlike a lot of the other Dumbles because it's an Ultraphonics modded amp. Uh, which is something that that Dumble did, but it's so it's not one of his actual models that he built. But I love the Ultraphonic stuff. I think it just I think they're beautiful. I love a lot of Dumble stuff, but this is one of my favorites. Dumble Phonics Clean sounds great. Today we're talking about this guy down here, though, the Studio EQ. Now you just heard it off. Now I'm gonna play it for you on here, um, but uh, let, let's let's dive into this Studio EQ and really try to understand what these things are doing because there's actually a lot here going on. There's really a lot going on in this thing. So let me play it for you um, off and then I'll switch it on. So here's off. <laughs> Here is uh, the studio equalizer on. Listen to the difference here. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so you can hear uh, what that EQ is doing is sort of giving us um, like a more mid uh, forward, a mid pushed sort of um, sound. And that's on purpose. It's a pretty um, it's a pretty clean American style. It's a dumbly kind of clean sound right now. But with this Studio EQ, we actually have in here, I really want to get into how to use it. So what we have in here are three different types of sort of EQ adjustments. And um, we'll call them peaks, passes, and shelves. And this is really important, peaks, passes, and shelves. So um, let's talk about passes first. And in here, the passes can also be called cuts. So a high pass or a low pass filter, right, um, can be used. It can be a little confusing if you think about it because a high cut is really like a low pass because it's how much low, up until what point do you want low to pass in. And so for us, that point is, um, uh, I'm gonna set this high cut at 5,800. So low pass is like, how much low end do you want to pass through? I want all the low end below 6,000 hertz. Well, that's the same thing as saying I want all the high end uh, above 6,000 hertz cut. So low pass and high cut, kind of the same thing. Kemper's given us low cut and high cut for us to understand it, but you might hear low pass and high pass. High pass is going to be like, how much of the highs do you want to let in? And you might go, I want everything higher than 100 hertz. And that's the same thing as going, I want everything below uh, 100 cut. So I want all the lows uh, you know, below 100 to be cut. So high pass, low pass, uh, and low cut, high cut are just kind of inverse to how they, how they work together. So it's the same thing, it's just a different name. So in our Kemper here, we got low cut and high cut. Um, this is really where we choose at what point do we want to kind of quickly dump. Now it doesn't go in a straight line. You know, when we dump, it, it doesn't strictly, because that would sound funny to our ear to just cut frequency at a certain point. It wouldn't sound natural. So what it does is it kind of really, it kind of sharply cuts it off. So that's our high pass and our low pass, high cut, low cut. Um, that, that type of thing. So we're choosing 6,000 hertz is where we want to tell the Kemper, when you get to 6,000, fall off. I don't want much above that. I want you to cut it off there and make it sound natural. And that's what it does. It, we don't have control over the Q, which is how steeply it cuts off. Uh, and same thing with our low cut. The next is, um, a sh let's get to the shelves first. Um, so we'll call peaks, passes, and shelves, right? So the next is our shelf. This is where we want to um, think of a shelf in a wall, right? It's an elevate. A wall goes up and then it and then it goes flat, and that's where we have the opportunity to tell the Kemper, uh, "Hey, um, I want to take all the frequencies from this point up or this point down, high and low, and I want you to do a certain something to them." So here, what we get is, "Hey, Kemper." Take everything from 200, right, 200 down, and I want you to boost it by two decibels. That would be one thing we can do. Or we can say, hey, Kemper, I want you to take everything in the low end uh, uh, below 200, and I want you to cut it by 2.5 decibels. You can do that. So it's a way to keep some of the bass, but just lower it. So let me show you a little bit what that sounds like. So let me take this bass frequency. Let me get rid of this low cut so you can kind of hear it. Um, and let's say everything below 200 Kemper, we want to boost by three decibels, okay? So listen to this. <laughs> Now I'm going to take everything below 200 hertz and I'm going to cut it by four decibels. You probably won't hear that on a phone and you might have noticed, hey, instantly that sounded a little more like a bridge pickup. Exactly. It sounded more like a bridge pickup because even though I'm on the middle, um, I could cut it way down and you get this. Now it really sounds like a bridge pickup, but what if I make it super fat like this, tons of bass. Super bloated, huge bigness, right? And so one thing that these can kind of help us work together on is, let's say we're in a mix and we want to say low cut. Listen, I'm playing with a bass player and we're in a busy room. I, I don't. I, I want you to cut off everything below 100, but I still want to have a solid tight bass 
I'm going to come up here and make my make this line 250, right? So I'm I want this I want this range of of bass between 100 and 250, and I want to boost it way up. Listen to this. <laughs> cut that uh, minus almost six decibels so now we're getting thin and thick and full but we don't have that huge bloated feel when we boost it up that's the kind of bass um, this sort of bass range is kind of what I feel like a 112 sounds like um, whereas if you allow yourself to go lower you start to get into more like, well, this would be like 412, you know? You know, this sound is a, a, a 212 close mic, so we already don't have as low a bass, but you get what I'm saying. The more deep the low end gets, it kind of sounds like a bigger cabinet. Um, but even if we make that low end, if we make those cuts, we're still able to boost bass and still get ourselves super strong bass without the bass being, it can be strong, but not very deep. Does that make sense? So strong, strong bass there. Now, let's let's return this to like our, our reasonable value of kind of where I had it before, which was uh, negative, uh, I think I had it at negative, like a half a decibel down. I had this low cut down and all I was really doing was just reducing everything kind of you know, down here, kind of below 100, just to get out of the way a little bit. Fine touches. And let's jump up here to high frequency and high gain. Same thing, but now we're talking about the high end. Um, you know, at which point, so from the point I'm picking is like in the frequency spectrum at 3000 hertz and up, what do you want me to do? That's my pivot point where I make my shelf and I want you to boost everything. Well, don't forget I have my cut here at uh, 6,000. So we got a lot of room. So look, I'm gonna actually boost up and now listen to this. From 3,000 to about 6,000 is gonna be pretty nicely boosted here. Now I'm gonna cut it way down so you can hear that. Negative six. And so there we're getting really bright and pokey, not so bright and pokey. Um, I really am cutting down a lot of the presence frequencies by going to 6,000 uh, on this high cut. I'm not allowing a ton of presence in there. So we're really getting some treble, some real treble change by doing this. And Okay, so I literally just broke a string, so we've got a different guitar for the rest of the video, and uh, that was two of the three uh, uh, peaks, passes, and uh, shelves that we want to talk about. So we covered shelves, we covered passes, and now peaks. We get two peaks in the mid-range here. We get two peaks, and um, it really the point of these peaks is to accent a certain mid-range character. So this guitar now sounds like this. <laughs> On the neck. Let's try cutting out a bunch of mid-range, right? We're boosting a bunch of mid-range here. So let's try cutting a bunch of mid-range. So I've got my two mid-range points. It's like 500 hertz, which is like the tube screamery frequency. And I've got the uh, uh, 2400, which is like a pretty high one. And uh, look, I'm gonna cut all that now, right? So now we're gonna get rid of a lot of that mid-range. Now it's gonna sound like this. <laughs> Sounds, it, it sounds like you're, it's almost not there because I'm cutting so much uh, uh, mid-range here. Now watch what happens if I come back and I boost this up to like three. All of a sudden a lot of this high treble-y presence is going to come back and it's going to sound like this. <laughs> To 
to me it sounds a little bit Tele-esque because I've got a lot of high twang, but these are like PAFs. These should be mid-rangey and kind of thick. Well, that's because I'm cutting all this mid-range down here. Let me boost this mid-range up and let me, uh, let me widen that Q and really make it a wide boost. And now we're gonna get, uh, and let me cut some of this 100 stuff. Uh, and now we're gonna get like a much thicker sounding version of this pickup. <laughs> you know, high, kind of high lit mids, low mids, right? And you can really push this up and even you can, you can like take this down a little bit. And now we're gonna get this fat, almost like much more honking sort of sound. <laughs> So that sounds like a fat, fat honk kind of thing, almost Tube Screamer-like EQ. Bring down those lower mids, raise up the higher mids, and we get back to this sort of thing. <laughs> single coil, trying to cop a thin guitar type thing. It's all there. Now let me let me reset this again. Let me go back to where it was. Um, I leave this so it's off and it sounds like this. this the always better EQ because it's just it's just always a bit better you know what I'm saying sound a bit better and basically if you look at all I'm doing here I'm really just telling a little bit of that 100 high end hey man just just move down a little bit make a little room for that boost that I'm giving at the 500 Hertz see right here hey 100 get out of the way a little bit 500 give me that some of that low mids let me boost you up a bit right treble high high mid treble wherever you want to draw that line on the guitar um, you know, high mids and treble, the both, I mean, high mids, you say are like 1200, 1600, but, um, ah, gosh, it depends. It's like more martially sounding when you get up, up to this range right here, but, um, it, you boost some of that up and you get that forward quality. It's really treble. It's really, it, but it's not like high treble. It's not like bright brightness treble. It's not like a bright switch presence kind of treble, you know? Let me get some of that, and then and then we shelve our high end around six thousand, and and we t and we're not really doing anything with the with the rest of the highs, and we turn it off and we get this beautiful beautiful type sound like this. <laughs> It, 
I mean, God, that sounds good. I mean, I don't know, that sounds to me even, even better. It's always better. Well, I hope that was helpful. I hope you now understand how to boost some of those useful bass frequencies, but also limit um, the signal so that we don't get all that muck and, and too much low end that's gonna muddy up our signal uh, and muddy up the mix, really. I hope you understand where there are some accent points in the mid-range that might be very useful to use to change your guitar from either a very thin sounding type of tone, maybe, maybe very thin and cutting is what you want, um, and, but maybe sometimes you wanna change it to thick and warm, and I hope you understand how to how to jump between those two now, and I hope you understand how to really make the amplifier feel like it's uh, back in a mix, forward in a mix, um, present in a mix, not so present in a mix, really get between warm and cutting on the treble end, present or not present, and how to do that, but also limit some of those offending frequencies. It's all about balance with frequencies and with EQ. And I hope this gets you a little closer to the Kemper tone in your head. Don't forget, HW still bleeds green. HW.